Hey guys, welcome to part two of our recipe stand video. And today we finish this guy up. I really think you're gonna enjoy how it finishes and it's gonna be a perfect gift for your friends and family. So if you haven't seen part one, we'll link it here in the e-card and also in the description below. We'll also make a playlist of this so you can see both videos and get to them super easy because I think you're gonna make this for a lot of gifts this year. So without further ado, let's get started. This is where we are so far, and I'm gonna see if I can hold it to the side so you can see what we've done. So here's what it looks like so far. This is our little magnet that closes it up for us, and here's our little dividers for recipes, and our tabs are on, and we've done all the decorating on those. So we're ready to move on to two things, decorating the outside and also making our recipe cards for the center. And I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. I wanna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna make my recipe cards before I decorate it so I can go ahead and fill it up a little bit. By the way, that's one reason. The more I put in here, the more it will stand up. <laughs> so I wanna go ahead and get some recipe cards made to go inside and I think that will help with the standing up of the piece and then we'll decorate the outside. It's time to make our pages for our recipe book and you will decide what color you wanna use. But I've decided to do, do this, um, I think this is lunch bag cardstock from Brutus Monroe. I like this neutral craft color and this is the one that I'm gonna be using for my actual pages that go between my dividers. Now to save paper and time and everything else, this is the size I'm gonna do them. Five and a half by five and a half. That way I can get two from one sheet of eight and a half by 11 cardstock. Okay, so that was my plan. Now I wanna show you something. You are gonna have some leftovers from these cuts, but look at the size of them. These are great scraps, so don't stress about this. And if you want a whole long scrap, just go ahead and cut it five and a half the long ways first, and you'll have this whole scrap. Again, you can use these somewhere, so don't stress that you have those scraps. I just put them into my little scrap pile, and I will pull them out later, I know me. Okay, so I'm gonna cut enough of these to fit into my book. Um, I'm probably going to do, I think, three per divider right now. So let me go ahead and cut that. That'll be 15 of these. So here's what I meant. If you cut the five and a half long ways first, you end up with this scrap. So you might would prefer to have this size scrap. Either way, you want to do it. And you probably can find a place in this album to use those. I'm just saying that's the leftover from the page we're using. To go on my recipe sheets, I have created a free PDF for you guys, okay? I say me, Mandy did this, so thank you, Mandy. So these recipe cards, this particular PDF comes with three recipe cards for you, and you'll notice that the recipe card um, square or outline is dark, but out here is a gray line. That's your cut line, so you can have a little border around it so it'll be cute. Now, I find for myself when I have a recipe card this size, which is a decent size card, but I never can get all my instructions and everything into one place, so here's what we did. We gave you a place to do the title, the prep time, and the total time, and then the ingredients here. Okay, then on the back of your sheet, we made you a, sh a piece that's big enough to put all your instructions because I find I never have enough room. You also, if you needed to, could cut extras of these. So if you had a recipe that had multiple uh, or that needed multiple pages of instructions, you could just cut extras of these. So you get three sheets on this PDF for recipe cards and you get two on this PDF. These will be linked in the blog post that's in the description below for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut these and show you how I'm gonna lay out my pages. Now, when I cut these, I wanna show you what I'm gonna do. I'm going to line them up on that lighter gray line. That is my cut line. I'm just gonna run this down that line. And so this is great scrap paper. You know what I do with these? Keep this handy so you have a place to write notes. When you're designing a project, I'm the worst about having scrap paper next to me. This is great for note writing about different projects. And then we're just gonna cut the rest of this away using that little lighter line, the gray line, and just keep going every time you see the gray line. And it's just a cute design element to have that little black border inside of there. And it'll make all your little cards look like they're matted for you. So you're gonna have a, a spot up here you need to trim away, just like so. Also, I cut this on regular um, computer paper. I did not use cardstock for this. I had thought about using cardstock, but I'm going to be gluing this to my cardstock pages. So I decided I'm just going to use my copy paper to save me money for one thing and also make this easier. Cutting through this, I just was able to cut all 15 of my recipe cards at one time. All right, now let me cut my ingredient sheets apart. Now these are a little thicker because I have more copies here. So I'm going to break this one down a little bit and I'm just going to place this in here like so. Slice down that line and you may not be comfortable 
stacking them all up like this and cutting them. It's gonna depend on your printer. If your printer's pretty good about printing everything in the same spot, you'll be fine. You might wanna cut one page at a time. That's up to you. And remember, when you're cutting um, copy paper like this, make sure, especially like this, you sink the blade. So put the blade in, go in both directions, and you'll get a much better cut that way. Now let's take the middle. Sink your blade. There's your, your instructions for the back side of your card. Let me cut the rest of them. So before I start building my pages, I wanna go ahead and put my holes in the right spot for these guys. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm going to take my little recipe card. I'm gonna line it up at the top. I'm gonna to eyeball center that just like so. If you need to measure to make sure it's the same on either side, go right ahead. I'm not going to. I'm gonna get it close like that. And then I'm gonna use my pencil and make a mark on one card. I slipped out a little bit, let me erase that. There we go. All right, now I'm gonna poke that hole first. Also using my crocodile, just like before. I'm gonna use the larger hole. I'm just gonna slide up in here and make this one. And this will become my template. So this guy's the one I'm gonna use for the rest of these. And I can do a bunch at one time with my crocodile. Probably even more than this, but we'll go right here for now. So just match that up and all your holes will line up correctly that way. So I got all my holes in place. Now let's start with the top recipe card. So what I'm gonna do on the front of the card is I'm gonna place my recipe card in the center. Let me get just one of those, there we go. I'm gonna place my, place my recipe card in the, sort of in the center. I can do it exactly center or I can bring it low if I want to. One reason I thought about bringing it low, let me tell you why. You might have some notes you wanna make about this recipe like, after you've made it or something that maybe grandma or somebody tells you is an exact note you need to make, like make sure you get a certain meat from a certain butcher or make sure, uh, maybe you wanna write the calories or the keto or the carbs or something that you wanna have extra. You could use this space for that so you'd have some good notes there. Of course you can put it on the back, but you might not have room. So you can put it to the bottom. I also think I kinda like the way this hangs with it being at the bottom. And worst case scenario, I can decorate this with a piece of anything, paper, washi, anything I want to do. So looking at this, I think I'm gonna put it at the bottom. I kind of like it there. All right, let me get my glue. So I'm just gonna use some art glitter glue. And whenever you're using art glitter glue and copy paper, you use the scantest amount. I mean, you do not need much. Any glue will warp paper if you get it too wet, especially copy paper, because copy paper is so thin as it is. So I'm just gonna place that down with the tiniest bit of art glitter glue there. And that is my first recipe on this side, okay? Now let me show you what the instruction side, we, what we had planned for it, this is it. We were going to make this so that you can put the instruction side on this side, okay? Now I'm gonna have to go back and poke my holes, that's okay. I just wanted to make sure my holes were in the right spot so I can go back through and poke my holes. And if you want to go ahead and glue your backs on first, since I'm building this for the first time now, <laughs> I'm learning, but you can go ahead and put this on first and then go poke all your holes will be fine. I'm just gonna run through and glue this guy down. But look, I get a whole sheet for instructions and that is awesome. That's my favorite. The other thing I like about this is you'll be able to take these out to write on them. So I don't have, that's one thing about a recipe book for me. I don't like when there's a binder or I struggle getting to the edge when something's spiral bound or what have you. This way I can just take this card out, write my recipe on the front, and then I can write here and then put it back into my card, so, or into my book, so I love that. So let me show you, let's poke the holes and I'll show you what it actually looks like. So there's what it looks like. Perfect, right? I love that. So that is one. I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna make 15 of these because that's where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna put three in each of my dividers. So let me get those made really quick. Now the fun part, the decorating. Okay, so here's what I've decided. I want my book to have a candy stripe feel to it. So I took that piece that's all the candy stripe and I've cut for myself pieces that are a quarter of an inch smaller on two sides so I can get a nice little matte piece here. I'll have the dimensions for these in the blog post for you, by the way, the cover pieces. And I'm going to be covering up my magnet here. Remember, I'm gonna cover it up there, but not on the flap. And then if you look down here, I've got the bottom and I've cut a piece for it as well. So I'm just gonna glue those down, super simple, and then we'll start decorating. If you want your patterns to match up on the bottom like this, just make sure you cut this piece from the bottom of that piece. So see how my patterns just continue pretty much. There's a little bit of a gap, but it's not bad. 
So that is this side. Now I also, that's the outside by the way, I wanna cover the inside just the same. So you see I've got the outside here. This will be the front, this little flap lifts up and look, it sticks to the magnet. But I want to do the inside as well, so I'm gonna pick some paper to cover that with. Okay, for the inside of mine, all the pieces are going to be um, a little pattern mix up like calico. So I'm gonna glue this one down. Now I wanna show you, go ahead and poke your holes. Don't forget, or you'll have to go back and poke those again. That's no big deal. Poke the holes so you can see where they're at. And again, if you want to wait and poke your holes all at the end, you can. Just remember that as you're making the album. I just kind of like to see them because I will forget and inevitably I'll put something somewhere it can't stay. And that's why I like to do mine as I go. You don't have to, but I am totally that person who will forget. All right, so let's poke these holes and then this side is ready. And I've already glued down the top. I'm just gonna glue down this little base. This piece is gonna be the inside of my album. And you can see that I've got these two patterns used here. So I wanna use the stripe underneath and that hides our workings too. It hides our little um, score piece right there that holds everything together. All right, so inside, oops, upside down, outside, peppermint, very cute. Now we just need to decorate the front of this guy. So that's what I'm gonna do next. I'm going to do this really quick because I know me and I will mess up. <laughs> I do not want to decorate below this, okay? I wanna make sure there's room for it. So I'm gonna put a pencil mark at the top of it just for reference for me so I can know I can do any decorating I want up here but not underneath it because I don't wanna cover up my magnet. For the front of my album, I wanna make a little apron. I think it'll be super cute if I have a little apron kind of right here and maybe some other stuff. I don't know what else is gonna go, but I wanna make an apron. This guy is three inches wide by, let me see four and a half tall, and here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have to do some fancy footwork, but we can make this happen. So using my two inch circle punch and one corner of the little piece, I'm gonna come in about, it's kind of hard, I'm eyeballing this. I'm coming down, let me lay this down where you can look at it. I'm coming down about a quarter of an inch from the top of the punch, and I'm coming in about a quarter of the way, maybe a little more than that. I am literally eyeballing this. But don't worry, you only have to eyeball one side, okay? So I'm gonna punch that. Don't get rid of this, we're gonna use this, okay? And here's how we're gonna use it. We're gonna take this little guy, so we've got our one circle done. Don't worry, it'll look like an apron when it's done. I'm gonna take the other side and flip it over. Now I can lay it right on the opposite side and using my pencil so I can match these guys up, I'm gonna trace this just like that, okay? So now I can go back to my circle punch and I don't have to eyeball match it up. Now I just have to line it up, that little round or that little pencil mark I made, line it up and punch it, and now both sides are the same. But you can see it doesn't really look like an apron yet. We're gonna make it look like one. So using my scissors, from the top here, I'm gonna cut straight down to where this circle levels out and I lose that little point. That's the first thing we're gonna do. I'm gonna flip it over and do it on the other side too. So straight down, you can kind of line your blade up there. I didn't get quite straight on that one. There we go, just straight down. Okay, so that gets us started. Then I'm going to take my um, corner rounder and I'm going to use my quarter of an inch side and I have to kind of lift this out a little bit to get it down in there. But if I do that, you see I get that little bit of a rounding. So I have to lift it out and kind of cheat it just a tiny bit. I just want that little rounding at the top. That's the quarter of an inch side. Now I'm gonna take the half inch side and punch the bottom. And this will give us the beginnings of an apron. Isn't that cute? I love that. So to make my pocket, I've cut a piece that is two and three fourths by an inch and three fourths wide. Okay, you make your pocket how you want it. I'm gonna use my corner rounder again with the half inch side and round the bottoms, only the bottoms this time. That's all I'm worried about. And I'm gonna place this guy in here just like this. So this is gonna be a pocket at the bottom of my apron. Isn't that cute? And I can make it an actual pocket if I want to. Um, so you could stick things inside. So by doing that, or to do that, all you need to do is glue three sides. So you're gonna glue one side and around the curve and then down the bottom and around the curve and up. So leave the top open, okay? And then glue this little guy down. He's so cute. Oops, I slid him. Okay, let's get him straight. So there's our little pocket. And then I'm gonna poke some holes. 
So at the top, just in this area, I'm gonna poke a hole using my, um, this is my new pokey tool that's kind of graduated. I love this guy, he's perfect for making holes. If I just twist him and just barely push him in, he makes me a larger hole, but not quite as big as what my hole punch makes. See that? That's what I'm looking for, because I want to run some baker's twine through here and make a little strap. So I'm going to try to line them up pretty even. They're not going to be perfect. It's all right. I'm going to feed that through and make my hole a little bigger. Perfect. And then I want some here as well. So in these little corners, poke a hole, poke a hole, and then make them a little bigger just by pushing and twisting. And then push and twist over here as well. So from the front, I'm going to feed some baker's twine through. Any color would work. I'm just going to use this little white and silver. And what I'm going to do, I think I'll come down this way. I'm going to tie a knot on this end. Maybe even a double knot, we'll see. That little single might work. That's kind of cute like that. So I'm gonna do a little knot and then cut away the excess here. Perfect. Now I'm gonna feed this other end through just like that. And then I'm gonna tie a knot down here. But let me see how long I want my little neck piece. Not super long. Pull that out. Bring this down. There we go. And then trim that away past the knot. And then just pull that in. Isn't that cute at the top already? Oh my goodness, that's so cute. Now, for safety's sake, I'm going to run some glue on top of my knot. You won't see it because I'm going to smash it down with my finger. But this will ensure that my knot won't come undone. It shouldn't anyway. It should be fine, but just as a safety. Now the same thing here. Here I'm going to do a double knot because this is the waist and it might need a little more structure, right? So a double knot, cut away the excess. Pull that to the end. That's cute. Let's do another one. And I am definitely using longer pieces than I need. I always do that. I would rather cut it too long than too short. You can certainly leave it on the spool if you want to be sure that um, you have enough and you don't waste any or have any excess you don't need. You might be wondering, why is she feeding it through the top? Well, when I poke the hole from the top, I get a much more open hole than trying to go from the backside. So that's why I feed it through the top when I do this. Double knot. Trim off our excess, get rid of that little guy, slide it down, and then add our glue. You could actually glue the knot to the page if you wanted. I'm not going to do that. I just want to put a little glue in there to make sure the knot doesn't loosen. I have a piece of this Rick Rack sticker left, and I want to see how much it would take to put at the top of this pocket. Let's just see. So to about that treble clef. So I'm going to cut this out just for a second. We'll trim it down exact in a minute. And what I'm going to do with this guy is cut off the edge. I just want a small ruffle edge. And I'm following the staff, the line of the staff, to help me get this straight. So I just want to cut that away. I'm not wasting anything. I can totally use this piece too later. What I'm going to do here is stick this little guy down onto the pocket. I think he'll be cute to look like a little trim at the top of our pocket. Now he's too long, so I need to trim him a little bit right here. There we go. So just to add a little trim at the top of our little pocket, and maybe even a little pocket right there would be cute. So this is one of the little pennants from the paper pack. I think it'd make a cute pocket. So I'm gonna cut the bottom away, just at the bottom of that tree, and get rid of the little pennant look, and go back to my corner rounder. Let's use the quarter of an inch side. I keep slinging them out. I need to clean this guy out. So the quarter of an inch side, make a little round hole, a little um, round edge there and there. I need to do this one again. Get it all the way in this time. There we go. Okay, and then that can be my little pocket at the top. It's so cute. Oh my goodness, that is cute. Okay, so I could even make extra pockets down here. Wouldn't that be cute? Hmm, we may have to do that. All right, I'm gonna glue this one at the top. I'm not gonna make it open because I don't think I'm putting anything inside of it. Just gonna put it up here like a pocket on the top of our little apron. And let me see if I wanna run some more down here. That might be cute. So I cut three more of those little pendants out and I'm gonna make them look like pockets too. I think this will be adorable. So there's this one and we'll put it toward the middle. Cute. Then this guy, putting him over here. And then this guy. You need lots of pockets in an apron, right? Stinking cute. Okay, now you know what it needs. Stitch lines, right? Let's do it. 
I should have done this before because I knew I was going to want to do it. You know how I am about my stitch lines, but this will just really set it off. There's our little apron. Let's go back to the front of our book. So here is the cover, and we got to decide how I'm going to lay it out. Remember, I didn't want it to block down here, and I think it's super cute like this, and I'm going to like twirl these and glue them on in some way, the little arms. But now I'm deciding what I want to put behind it. So here's a tip for you. <laughs> I was struggling with how I wanted to lay out the front. I love my apron and I know I want to use my apron. So I left it and I stepped away and I've come back the next morning and now I know exactly what I want to do. I found a couple of stickers. This one I think is really cute that'll go behind there to give us a little kind of landing spot because it's dark. And then this one I want to put on top because I think that'll be cute to have sitting on my kitchen throughout the year or throughout the holiday season on my counter. But I really want my apron to pop a little more. So let me show you what I'm going to do. And this, I'm gonna move these stickers because y'all know I'm gonna be wearing them. Let's just put them right over here. Okay. So this may be a little much, but it's just one of those things. I handmade this. Had I thought about it, I'd have done it ahead of time, but I didn't. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take some foam, some Scotty, and I'm gonna pop this guy up onto some black cardstock, and then I'm going to fussy cut it out. Um, again, had I thought about this in the beginning, I would have made this guy this way. I would have just go, gone ahead and made two of them the right size. So if you kind of like the way this looks when this is over with, which I don't even know how it's going to look yet, we'll find out together, then you might want to think about that when you first start to make it. And I'm popping it up on foam because of my string. So I want it to still lay nice and neat. So let me get some black paper. So I've got some black cardstock. I'm going to peel the backer off of this and stick this down to my cardstock. There we go. And then... Just gonna make sure I leave myself enough room to fussy cut it. So I'm gonna put it on about like that. And then I'm just gonna use some scissors and cut around to give myself a border. Just making sure I don't get my string. So I'm gonna pull my string out of the way and hold it to the other side. Then I'm gonna come in here like this and I'm just gonna cut around the edge. That actually was super easy. And now it'll really pop on that red background, that red and white stripey background. So you'll see why I think I needed to do this. So see how much better my little apron really shows up than before. I'm thinking about putting the little neck around um, in that little area there so that the ring goes around the little neck. I think that'll be cute. So there's that. And remember, I've got my little mark down there. I don't really want to go below that little mark. So that's about where this will live. And let's go back to the stickers and I'll show you. I was thinking about putting this guy behind here so it would look something like that. I really like that. I think that looks pretty. I'm going to decide where it's going to go. All right, so in this area, but I want to get it straight. and That is not straight. I'm using this edge to help me get it straight. There we go. So that guy's going to go there. Then I want this guy to hang out over here. Just like it's tossed there and look something like that. And then, of course, I can... I'll glue these down where I want them. Let me see if I want to put something at the bottom to kind of weight it. So this piece is one of the strips from the cardstock itself. And I thought that'd be cute down here. And even though it's going to get covered up by my little, um, my little latch, I think it'll still be cute to have some decoration down there. So I'm going to glue that straight down to the page. And I cut it the same size as the paper so it would just kind of nest right in there just like that. Perfect. Cool beans. Okay. So now I want to decide where you're actually going to live. I think just about like that. This can stand up here. It won't really get in the way. Even when I'm flipping it around, it'll just lay behind. So I'm going to glue this as close to that little piece as I can. And I'm going to glue it directly down. Before I did the shadow piece on it, I was going to actually pop it up with foam. But since I did this shadow and it's already popped up a little bit, I really don't need any more dimension there. So I'm going to put this down. It is so cute. Try not to glue my strings. <laughs> there we go. It's all in how you hold it. So we'll put this down about like this. I don't want to cover up all the words at the top there. That is adorbs. If I say so myself, I really like it. So then I just want to decide how I want that to go. I think it's a little bit long. I really like how this one's going over here, how it's coming back. So I'm going to glue that down. But I'm going to tie a little knot. And I think this may be a little long. Let me tie a knot. I'm going to do a knot in the ends of both pieces. That'll help me glue it down as well. 
so oh like that is cute yep let me cut this little end off and then I'm just going to tack it down in a couple of places making sure you can still read what's underneath it there so a little glue here just put that into it and a little here I find that tacking it down is a couple things. Number one, it's safer that it won't rip off. Number two, it makes your little string stay just like you want it to stay. In hindsight, I might would have done this in maybe a black and white string, um, but mostly just looking on camera. In person, I can see it, but on camera, it looks like it's a little hard for you guys to see. And then I'm just gonna glue the little knot down right here. All right, I'm gonna hold those in place and we'll do the other side. All right, and I want I wanna put a knot in this one as well. That does two things. It gives me a place to um, sort of anchor it, but it also will keep it from unraveling over the years. Okay, so how are you laying? I had to mess with you, didn't I? Something like that. I'm gonna tack down this little edge as well. And I'm not gonna tack up here, I don't think. I think I like it to be a little loose, so if it does get flipped around, it's not gonna be a big deal. But I don't think it's going anywhere. Matter of fact, if you were gonna tack it, I would probably tack it down to the apron. So even though I put a little glue in there to hold the knot, we'll just put a little um, glue to hold those in place. So that way I know it won't pull out. Okay, so that is the front. I think it's super cute. I love how this is looking. All right, let's put the guy together. So I told you I'm using the larger rings. These are the two inch rings. Um, I think on my calendar, I use the inch and a half, but I think I'm gonna go back and use these on it as well because as it's filling up, I think it needs it. So we're using these two inch rings this time. And I made enough recipe cards to put three cards between each divider to start. So I'm gonna start with recipe cards, dropping those in like so, then my divider. And my divider on the bottom is desserts, so that one will go in. And then three more cards. And then the next one was, I can't remember, side dishes, I think. Yeah. And then three more cards. And then it was main dishes. Three more cards. Salads. And my last three cards. And this was four appetizers. This is coming together cute. I really like how this looks. Okay. So now what we need to do is put our cover on. So my cover goes just like this, just in those little holes. And we can go ahead and close this up. And see how the ring is going, the little um, apron neck is in the ring, that works just fine. And now to stand it up, okay, you're just gonna stand it and then open the bottom. And I'll turn this sideways so you can see it. And then close your little magnet. And that is your little recipe book for your counter. I love it, look at that. All right, let me turn it to its side. So this is what it looks like on its side, like this. Isn't that adorable? I love how it looks. This little guy opens, okay? And then when you need to get to a recipe, you just open it, flip to the one you wanna cook, right? Stand it up. This is the part I'm gonna have to try to show you sideways. Stand it up, so imagine it's standing, okay? And then you just turn the magnet in and it will still stick to the same spot. And now you can stand it up and use your recipe. Isn't that cute? And the plan was, so the front shows you your ingredients when you flip this around to the back side. Let me get it to lay around there. These are your instructions on the back. So you can hold your recipe up to get your ingredients and then there is your instructions on the back for you to make it. Super cute. Now, these rings are big. I'm gonna put the one and a half inch in real quick and see if they work as well. They might, and depending on how full you make it, it will probably work, but I wanna see the difference. Okay, I like the one and a half inch much better. I did not think I would. I was afraid they would be too small, but they're doing a really good job. So what you might wanna do is just have some one and a half for when you start or when you give it as a gift, and maybe give the larger rings to the person in case they're gonna to add to it. Um, or if you're going to put a lot of recipes in. I don't think you're going to need these. I thought at first I would, but I'm thinking it holds up better with the smaller rings because it's less loose and it stands up better and they don't flip over. So we learned that together, but I love how this turned out. I really do. I think it's adorable. 
So you know the deal. If you make one of these, I want to see it. Head to my website called maymaymadeit.com and go to our customer gallery and share photos of your projects and show me what you're making, especially your recipe albums. Look how cute it is. We can flip through and see. We've got our little recipes. We've got our salads, our mains, our sides. This is really cute. I love it. Perfect gift for the season. And remember, you don't have to make it Christmas themed. I just wanted one for our Christmas recipes, but you could totally do this just regular uh, recipe themed and make this as like a family recipe book. You guys tell me in the comments below what you would make it out, what you would put inside or what themes you would do. I would love to know. Thanks so much for watching guys. Um, I will talk to you again next time. Bye-bye.